Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this evening's uh, public forum to discuss the new Brockton Public Safety Building. Uh, I want to let people uh, who are watching us know that uh, if you hover your um, cursor over the uh, at, at the bottom right of your window, you should see a uh, representation of a globe, and that will allow you to choose the language of your choice. Uh, you can listen to this track in Spanish, uh, Cape Verdean Creole, and Haitian Creole. So those are your choices. We have live translation going on uh, with us this evening. So with that set up, I would like to introduce uh, Mayor Robert F. Sullivan, who will give us an overview of, tonight, of the project and what we'll talk about this evening. Thank you very much, Rob. Good evening. Uh, I'm really proud to be here tonight, uh, and I'm really thankful for everybody taking time out of their lives uh, to join us tonight. Um, this is an extremely important public meeting, and I wish to first of all thank Brockton Community Access for filming tonight and assisting us. Uh, this is currently being uh, filmed. It is live on BCA uh, television, and it also is Zoom, and then it will be uh, aired on YouTube later tonight. I also want to know that this let you all know that the city of Brockton has retained translation services, uh, Haitian Creole, Cape Verdean Creole, Spanish and English tonight uh, to, uh, to help all of our residents within the city of Brockton. What's before us this evening is a proposed public safety building, which will house four different city departments, informational technology, IT, BEMA, which is our Brockton Emergency Management Agency, our police department and our fire department. It truly is an, an overdue project. In fact, many previous mayoral administrations has, have worked to try to make this come to fruition. And I just wanna personally thank the Brockton City Council, all 11 dedicated public servants who have supported the initial steps by authorizing uh, the bonding for this project. This really is extremely important. Uh, I also wanna just thank each and every one of you, the Brockton residents. As you may recall, when I appeared before the Brockton City Council, I pledge to do exactly what we're doing tonight, a public meeting to hear from our residents about an extremely important but yet needed project in the city of Brockton that will clean up an area of the city of Brockton where I grew up in Ward 2 that will bring state-of-the-art technology, <coughs> a welcoming, welcoming community, but also to be able to have four different departments in one stop shopping location. In fact, informational technology, which is located at Brockton High School in the core building, will be able to relocate, which will then open up free classroom spaces for our boys and girls of Brockton High School. To me, that's a no brainer, that's a wonderful endeavor. But I also just want to let you know that this evening you'll be hearing from numerous individuals. We've spent 32 weeks weekly on this, 32 weeks to talk about this, to vet this out. You'll be hearing from distinguished uh, City Council President Winthrop Farwell, Mike Thomas, our Superintendent of Brockton Public Schools, Troy Clarkson, a CFO for the city of Brockton, as well as the city's architect and development consultant. But more importantly, we wanna hear from each and every one of you. So again, I thank you tonight. I believe it's gonna be a really fruitful conversation where we will listen and learn and we'll be able to inform and educate. So again, thank you so much. I look forward to it and I appreciate each and every one of you working in collaboration to better our city and better our community. Thank you. And thank you, Mayor Sullivan. Uh, with that, I would like to introduce Council President Winter Farwell. Uh, thank you, Rob, and good evening, everyone. Thanks for taking time out of your family schedule and your evening to join us tonight to hear about this project. Uh, when the mayor decided to co-locate four city departments, integrate services, and involve all of us in what has now been a minimum of 33 meetings, studying the needs of the various departments, looking ahead half a century, because I think this building and what we're trying to do tonight will well serve the citizens of Brockton for the next 50 years. It's an exciting time, it's needed. We have a fire station in the central part of the city that was built before 1900. We have a police station that's at least 60 years old and our residents deserve to have an environmentally safe and modern facility when they go to the fire department to file a report, to ask for assistance, and to the fire department when services are needed. So I welcome all of you. I hope you'll listen carefully to the experts who have invested hundreds of hours into making sure that this project is successful 
And thanks to Mayor Sullivan for his leadership on this. And thanks to my colleague, Ward 7, Shirley Azak, who also attended those 33 meetings. So we'd be fully aware of the needs of the city and the needs of the stakeholders who will occupy these buildings. Have a great night. Thanks again. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, we are now going to hear from uh, our, the city's chief financial officer, Troy Clarkson, who's gonna talk a little bit about how we are financing this uh, endeavor. Mr. Clarkson. Thanks Rob very much. And I'm happy to share some information with the citizens of Brockton tonight. As Rob said, my name is Troy Clarkson and I am proud to serve as the city's chief financial officer. Uh, not only because it's my professional job, but because my parents both grew up in Brockton and I'm originally from Brockton. And to see this kind of modern facility being built uh, and being built affordably, I think is an important milestone. So I'm happy to share with you some of the details uh, about just how we pay for something. Because when you hear of a cost of $98 million, it can be daunting. It can be overwhelming to think, how would we pay for something like that? And the way we generally pay for projects like this is through borrowing, much like uh, some of us do with our homes. Uh, we borrow money to, uh, to build a project like this and then have to pay it out over several years. The really good news for the city of Brockton and for its taxpayers uh, is that the city of Brockton's debt load, uh, its debt position, the amount of accumulated debt we have is very low. In fact, uh, the people who rate our bonds when we borrow money, we call them the rating agencies. They don't like for our, our, our debt spending, our principal and interest to be any more than 10% of our budget. For us, that would mean about $45 million a year. Our debt spending is actually about $15 million a year. So we are well below, um, well below what uh, the rating agencies would like to be a reasonable amount of debt. This graph shows uh, how our debt will progress over the next several years. And as you can see, the orange line represents uh, our total debt that the city has right now. And we spend uh, about $12 million a year. Uh, and that'll rise over the next few years for some obligations that we have that are retiring. But then you can see that drop off. Uh, the line goes way, way down. The reason for that is we have some debt that's retiring, meaning we will pay it off. And so we will be able to take on new debt without impacting the budget and without asking for additional money from you, the taxpayers. So that green grouping there represents what it would look like if we borrowed $98 million to build the public safety complex. And it shows that we could pay that principal and interest and still be paying less than we do right now for, for debt. What it also shows in that orange area is that we also have room within our current debt load to do other projects. So for instance, folks that may ask, well, can we build a public safety complex and renovate the high school at the same time and have that be affordable? The answer is yes. And this is the exact graph that I showed to the city council when we asked them to approve the authorization to borrow the $98 million. So this project is planned within our current budget. We will not be asking the taxpayers for additional funds. And it's for that reason uh, that I provided my enthusiastic support. And in my professional opinion, it's a very wise financial decision for the city to proceed. I'm happy during the, the, the visit this evening to answer any questions citizens may have. And I thank you for the opportunity to speak. Thank you very much, Troy. Uh, we've all heard uh, some comments about how this might affect the schools. And for that, I would like to introduce uh, the Superintendent of Brockton Schools, Mike Thomas. Thank you, Rob. Um, uh, thank you, Mayor, and um, everyone for having me here tonight. I appreciate it. Uh, first, I want to thank uh, the school committee, the city council, and mayor's office. Um, we put in several school building um, um, uh, projects over the last several years, um, basically over $75 million in work to schools uh, over the last 10 years, 80% uh, reimbursed by the MSBA. Uh, and I always want to thank the city, the school department, the city council and the mayor for the, always supporting those. Uh, and they've always supported those 100%. Um, back last fall, we went to the city council um, to get 
to allow us to put a, a statement of interest into the Mass School Building Authority uh, for a renovation of Brockton High School. And again, that passed without a problem unanimously. So um, plans are still moving forward for Brockton High School. Uh, and we should know by this summer uh, if we're awarding, awarded that grant, which I believe we will be. Um, and as far as the key school, the, um, one of the identified locations, uh, it houses some of our most needy kids and at-risk students. Um, we all love the old Brockton High School, but um, it is over 100 years old um, and is not conducive to 21st century learning any longer. Um, so my, the mayor and myself, Vice Chair um, Mark Augustino, Joyce Azak from the facilities subcommittee and entire school committee um, has been working, have been working together to find a, a new location for the key school, um, a much newer location, much more conducive to 21st century learning. Because again, for our most at-risk students, we wouldn't, we wouldn't accept anything less. Um, the mayor, the council and the school committee are hundred percent committed to that. And um, we've been looking at locations and I'm confident that our students at the key center where their faculty do, do such a great job with their administrators um, are gonna end up in a much, much better, newer facility. Again, that's much more conducive to 21st century learning. So again, thank you for having me here tonight. Uh, and always thank you for supporting the Brockton Public Schools. Thank you very much, Superintendent. Uh, now that we've heard from uh, some key uh, elected and uh, municipal officials, we'd like to uh, introduce our design team. And I'm first going to ask uh, Joe Sullivan from CHA uh, to introduce himself, and uh, CHA is our owner's project manager. So, Joe? Thank you, Robin. Thank you, Maya, for having us be part of this um, elaborate public safety building for the 21st century. Um, I'm a senior project manager. My name is Joseph Sullivan. Um, I've been with uh, the company for a little over 21 years. Um, our primary and our biggest focus as project manager is to ensure we are protecting and looking out at the best interests of the city. It begins from the selection of the designer, which you'll hear shortly from, and leads into creating a solid set of construction documents. We go through the state procurement process to ensure that we hire the best contractor and subcontractors available at the most economical price to ensure the city of Brockton receives a 21st century facility they'll be proud of and have for the next 50 years. Um, I. I'm looking forward to this. I, I think that they put a strategic team together that will ensure the successfulness of this project. And I look forward to working with the city. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. And uh, I'd like to turn it over now to um, Sean Smeagol with KDA Architects. He has a brief presentation to talk about um, how we chose the site and what the facility may look like. Thank you, Rob. Uh, as Rob just mentioned, uh, I'm Sean Schmiegel from Castle Blues Associates. I'm the project manager on this project. Um, accompanying tonight is also Todd Cospa, who is the principal in charge of this project. Uh, so I just kind of quickly go through just a brief summary of where we are and where we've um, been on this project. Uh, so looking below, or sorry, looking, looking at the slides in front of you. So first we looked at the a project vision. And what, what we were looking at is to develop a modern public safety facility to improve the department performance or all, in part, all department performance, help create a more resilient 24 seven operations and also co-locate co operations between departments. And with that, that'll help build efficiencies within government uh, with combined the police department, fire department, BEMA and the city IT as you just heard. Uh, with that, we created a state of the art police and fire department training facilities, which will help create individual department training opportunities. Uh, in addition, looking to help improve response times in, in the greater city area, um, in a, looking to also meet current public safety and health code standards. And lastly, looking to help reimagine the Warren City, Warren Ave City block and Legion Parkway. As we started looking at the uh, potential sites, we first initiated and looked at all the existing sites. So looking at the, the graph in front of you, all the red dots um, are all the existing fire department um, buildings. The blue dot in the center, the center of town, is the existing police department. Uh, and the, the circles around these, the, this, this diagram are showing the 
response time radiuses through the downtown center, a half mile radius, one mile radius, and a two mile radius. As we went through that, we looked at eight possible site locations throughout the city. And those are all your green dots on this, on this chart. Further looking into that, we looked at how, if there were four individual department buildings, what that would take. Um, so looking at those eight sites, we would need a minimum of seven acres of buildable land, uh, which was very, very challenging and difficult to find. And there were, there were fairly none. Uh, looking to co at a combined facility to combine all four departments, we were able to help consolidate not only the building footprint, uh, parking requirements, but being able to find a, a, a smaller acre of, of land. So three and a half acres of buildable property. And with that, <clears throat> we were able to help consolidate and consider a location that's downtown, uh, close proximity to downtown and help maintain the response times for the city. And lastly, what we also considered was looking at traffic patterns and locations of the low underpasses that would greater affect possible fire truck response times and rescue response times. From there, we created a, um, a site assessment matrix or a scorecard. Uh, with that, we looked at, as I just mentioned before, total acreage and build buildable land, general locations throughout the city, uh, potential site development costs and, and environmental contamination costs or removals, ownerships of property, whether a city owned or privately owned, total assessment costs of the properties, um, types of abutting properties, zoning requirements and recommendations in the end. So quickly looking at, I know there's a lot of colors here, it's hard to read. So looking at the pink colors throughout is, is, is a scorecard, a score of zero, which is not possible to build on or in, the, in these properties. Color of orange received a score of one, which was a less favorable um, option for a property or a piece of land. Everything in green is, was neutral or favorable. So had, had a greater chance of, of, of the property to uh, receive a combined public safety facility. And lastly, everything in blue was the most favorable and it received a score of five. Uh, so with all of that, looking at all the categories, looking at all the scores, you can see what was highlighted um, is the 175 Warren Ave. And that became a recommended site with the highest score, most favorable, um, and didn't have any, any negative aspects related to build, a, a buildable property. So with that, looking at some of the advantages of what the development of this 175 Warren Ave would create. So it's, been, as I just mentioned, re being able to redevelop the whole city block. Uh, as, as Superintendent Mike Thomas mentioned, it's an opportunity to help relocate an existing community school in a more appropriate building that meets today's current needs, standards for educational use and space for not only the students, but also the staff and faculty. Uh, and lastly, as we mentioned a number of times already is help consolidate city governments and facilities under one roof, which in turn really creates efficiencies and um, generally provides an overall cost savings for the, for the city. Looking here is a um, diagram of, a, of the site plan. Uh, so one Warren Ave is at the bottom of your plan or on the screen. Um, West Elm is, is, is on the left-hand side of your screen, Goddard at the rear of the, of the top of the screen and Highland Street on the right side of your screen. So what's showing here is it's the combined pub public safety facility, which will provide general equality accommodations and flexibility. Uh, at the lower left portion of the site is a, what we've been calling recently a public peace park, or a memorial park area for not only the facility, but also the, the city itself. Uh, there's visitor parking at the lower portion here, as you can see my mouse, along Warren Ave for day-to-day -day visitors. Uh, within the building, uh, main entrance would be right along Warren Ave. And within the building, there would be a public meeting room for large meetings and, lar and community use. Uh, both local community and, and extended community. Uh, there'll be advanced training facilities, secured parking um, facilities for the departments. There'll be a redevelopment of Warren Ave into a two-way street. Uh, and lastly, there'll be an enhanced traffic signaling um, at, major, at all the major intersections along, not only we're on here, but also Warren Ave. Looking a little bit deeper into the, what I would call the Peace Park of Memorial um, Park. Uh, what we look, what we've been looking into is, is, for inspirations, is providing spaces shown that with concepts for seating plazas and gathering areas, uh, creating an area to 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 help join the community with walkways, um, and with these forms of either curvilinear, 
rectilinear walkways or a combination of the both to help um, create interesting spaces. And just in general, just all the characteristics making a focal point of this, this portion of the city. Uh, looking to the building itself, uh, some of the, over the last 33 weeks, as, as uh, Council President Mayor mentioned, uh, we've been looking at many different types of buildings, but inspirationally, a lot of the key terms of what you've been hearing so far are modern 21st century design, welcoming building, openness, uh, glass. Um, so just a lot of those key terms of what, what we've been hearing for the last uh, many, many weeks. So looking at our um, preliminary renderings or perspectives, uh, looking in front of you right here is, is, a, is a rendition along Warren Ave of what the building potentially could be. And what it is, is it's, it's, it's a tall transparent opening um, at the main entrance, which is, is welcoming an environment and it will help break down um, the long linear facade of the building. Next is the intersection of Highland Street and Warren, uh, which happens to be the, the corner of, for the fire department. But again, it's, it's, it's a great use of brick, glass, metal panel systems along this, this intersection, which you know, is a more dynamic facade and, 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 and inviting and, and open for, for the common public. Um, so that is it for now. I will stop sharing and pass it off to Rob. John, thank you very much. Um, it's been a pleasure working with you so far um, through this process. And um, before we move on to the public comment, I do want to thank um, my co-host, uh, John Messia and Danielle Littman from the mayor's office. They're going to be helping us work our way through the public comment. Um, for those of you who are interested in making uh, public comment, if you could, um, if you click under the participant button at the bottom, it, you'll be able to uh, open up and, and see your name on a, on a screen. And we're asking you to rename yourself, uh, which if you hover over your name, um, you'll be able to, there's a, a, a button that, that says more and it'll allow you to rename yourself. And that's important for the public record. We already have a lot of comments from anonymous and it's very hard to take those um, seriously when, when we don't have um, uh, a name to uh, associate with those. So for people who are interested in speaking, there is a raise your hand function. Uh, you can do that uh, either in the participants panel or at the bottom of your screen by hovering your mouse, you'll see a raise your hand. If you're joining us by phone, to raise your hand on phone, you need to press star nine. Okay, so if, for if you're on the phone, star nine. And we have our first hand up and I would ask uh, Danielle to uh, open the microphone for Bishop Tony Branch. Good afternoon, can everyone hear me clearly? Yes, sir. Yes, good afternoon, Mayor Sullivan, President of the Brockton City Council and other department heads, specifically our Chief of Police and our Chief of the Brockton Fire Department. My name is Bishop Tony Branch. I'm the first Vice President of the Brockton Area Branch of the NAACP. I will be speaking on behalf of our uh, of the uh, Brockton branch of area branch of the NAACP on today in absence of President Phyllis Ellis. Specifically on May 25th, 2020, George Floyd was murdered by a sworn police officer. Mr. Floyd was unarmed. His alleged crime is still unknown. His death is permanent. Mr. Floyd's death ignited a reoccurring theme for police reform. Chants of defunding the police were echoed across the United States, including here in the city of Brockton. To our favor, Mayor Sullivan echoed his disgust in what he described as a murder. At a peaceful rally, Mayor Sullivan is believed to be one of the first municipal leaders in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts to take a knee. Brockton Chief of Police Emmanuel Gomes also took a knee in solidarity with the many who remain disgusted at George Floyd's murder. Mayor Sullivan commissioned the Community Justice Task Force to take on the task of looking at municipal reform in the terms of the community's lens. During that same time, we faced this pandemic, 
where young adults remain out of school, many struggling for academic success, many suffering from debilitating emotional depression due to isolation. Their unheard cries exist. We, as the stewards of their future, have the responsibility to advocate for them. Today, I come to you as family. As family, we will have some disagreements. We believe that the NAACP has a disagreement with many of you on today. We don't echo that this is an exciting time in the city of Brockton. We echo that there's a need for police reform. We echo there's a need also for students to be successful. We are in disagreement that there should be any dismantlement of property in the city of Brockton, specifically those that impact the Keefe Center until we first deal with where those students are going to be placed. One of the things that we noticed this evening that there was a thorough site assessment with respect to this public safety complex. We believe such a, an assessment should have also had occurred prior to us moving forward. We are prepared in an emergency meeting to vote in opposition to any process that does not first address where the students of the Keefe Center are going to end up being. That is all that is important to us, for us, excuse me, that, that is all at this point that is important to us. Let us also be said for the record, the NAACP and its members are not in opposition to a public safety complex. We are in opposition to any organization, to any suggestion, any leadership that would displace our students. I wanna thank you for allowing me to make this statement and God bless you. Thank you, Bishop Branch. Would one of our panelists like to um, address that? Mayor Sullivan, please. Thank you. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you for what you do, Tony, in the community. Uh, I'm going to be extremely clear about this. Uh, Mike Thomas and I have been talking about for months now, uh, months. Uh, not <laughs> one student or staff will be relocated from the Keith Center until we find a facility, a facility, an educational facility that is accommodating that is better than where they are right now. We have Principal Cindy Burns, who's an unbelievable public servant. We have Dr. Jim Cobbs, who works operations. Both of those individuals are on that weekly call with us. We're all crystal clear. Our youth, our generation behind us, that's, that's what Brockton's about. So I uh, thank you, Tony, for bringing that up, Bishop. But I wanna make it clear as the mayor and as a dad of three kids, education is paramount. Mike Thomas is an unbelievable superintendent. But rest assured, we will not not go forward until we have a location that is better than where they are currently. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. May? Uh, Mr. Thomas, uh, Superintendent? Yep, thank you. Um, thank you, Bishop Branch, and always looking out for the students uh, of Brockton uh, in the school department. We really appreciate it. We know your service to the community and also as you serve on the Southeastern um, School Committee, um, you know, it's, you know, and we appreciate um, everything you do for the youth. And um, I'm 100% in agreement that our students in the uh, Key Center, um, you know, they need much better than what they have now in that building. Um, and I'd be in total opposition if I thought that they weren't going into a location that's going to be much better, um, because that is a center that is, um, serves for dropout prevention uh, again, bringing students back through the Pathway Center, um, sending students to early college. Um, and again, uh, we're in agreement that absolutely, and the May has been 100% with this, that those students will not be moved until they are in a much be better facility than they are now. So thank you. I appreciate, obviously, your support of the, of the students of the Brockton Public Schools and, and all, the, all the, um, the children in Brockton. Thank you. And thank you, Superintendent. And I believe Council President Farwell would also like to uh, address um, Bishop Branch's um, remarks. The sentiments of the mayor and Superintendent Thomas, I have heard nothing else from councilors contrary to that. I, I cannot never predict how someone will vote, but I think you have unanimous support to team with the superintendent and the mayor and take care of those students and not proceed until we are sure that all of their educational needs are met. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bishop Branch. Thank you, sir. Uh, our next uh, speaker is going to be Michael Nunez. 
uh, Michael, I am asking that your uh, be uh, unlocked. Thank you. And you should be able to address the group now. While we're waiting for Mr. Nunes to join, uh, I do want to remind folks that uh, we are asking um, the public uh, to limit their comments to 30 seconds. We have over 85 people in attendance this evening, and um, we want to hear from everybody. Your comments are important to us. We're also taking comments by email and through the question and answer function at the bottom. So. Um, this is not your only chance to um, be heard. So, Michael Nunes, yeah. are you available? Yeah, I'm here, Michael. Sir. Yep. So, I just got a quick question about the building that's being in there now, the high school. So, as everybody knows the history, that there was two high school buildings there, A and B. A is gone, B stands there. Now, with that being said, uh, a lot of history has been knocked down in Brockton, Massachusetts. So, and a lot of people are concerned about this as well. Why is it that you guys cannot incorporate the building that's there now into the public safety building? Uh, Mayor Carpenter? Hey, oh, excuse me. Oh, Sullivan. Hey, Sullivan. Um, so first of all, Michael, thank you. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm the son of a history teacher. My dad was in the red for uh, 35 years at Brockton High. So I love history. Um, I will tell you this that if we're gonna be spending $98 million uh, on, a, on a modern facility, unfortunately that building would not be able to be incorporated into it. It just doesn't meet the standards. It was built a hundred years ago. I will tell you this though, over the 32 weeks, all of us have agreed that we need to capture history, Brockton history. We just lost a piece of history at the fairgrounds when the state house burnt down. So um, the Peace Garden, the Memorial Garden that we're talking about, we're gonna capture some components of the existing uh, building that is there now. On the West Elm Street side, the pillars that are there, uh, some of the facade is beautiful. It will not be destroyed. Uh, much like when the Ganley building was taken down, uh, I had the building department capture some of that and it's gonna be donated to the Historic Society. So I thank you. Uh, I'd love to talk to you further about that, Michael, because again, uh, we can't lose history. We need to maintain it, uh, but at the same time, uh, that building would not be able to be tied in. I don't know if Sean or, or Joe from the architectural standpoint wants to talk about that, but um, I appreciate that comment, Mr. Nunes. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Sullivan. Uh, with the architect, uh, Joe uh, from our owner's project manager was on the team that did a uh, reconnaissance on the old high school. So say Thank something you, Joe. Yeah, th there's a bunch of features related to that high school that, you know, you know, are, are very historical. And I think, you know, there's portions of it and there's sections of that building that we're gonna to try to incorporate and, and utilize some of the material within the new facility. So um, I think, you know, as Mayor Sullivan had indicated that we're gonna to try to, you know, utilize whatever material available for, for historical purposes, but we'll, we'll try to integrate some of the material within that building in the new public safety. And as the drawings progress and the, and the design evolves, we'll be able to share that as we move forward. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, sir. Um, I'm going to ask uh, for the microphone of Joanne Zygmunt to be uh, opened. And Joanne, you should be able to address the group. Hello, good evening, folks. Can you hear me all right? Yes, we can. Super. So I have two questions. Um, the first one is um, both Mr. Schmeigel and Mr. Sullivan have uh, said that the designs are yet to be developed for the building. So I'm just wondering in the, and as we all know, architecture is subjective and lots of people probably have very strong opinions on the renderings that have been done so far. I'm wondering if somebody could tell us a little bit more about what the public participation process will involve for the further development of what this building might actually look like, including the Peace Garden that keeps being referred to. And then related to that, my second question is, it's a big project, it's a lot of money, and I'm wondering what effort is going to be put into making this a sustainable and resilient building. Will there be solar on the roof? Will there be um, you know, nature-based infrastructure built into this? So if you could address that as well, that'd be great. Thank you. Sean, would you like to take a, a, a poke at the environmental 
Yep. So uh, related to the un uh, underdeveloped uh, design, but we're in the middle of um, schematic design, <clears throat> which is the earlier phases of design where we, you know, we, we work with the programming of each department, all the, all the, all of the, each department, we start getting the building footprints. We start, we're talking about building systems. Uh, with that, we start discussing sustainability, uh, sustainability in materials, sustainability and efficiencies of mechanical systems, um, and, and start looking into um, the opportunity for, for sustainable, sorry, uh, renewable materials and renewable energies. Uh, solar has been discussed. Um, all buildings that we've designed and, and future design, we, it's all sustain, uh, solar ready that we, we call it. It's, it's by code and by um, law. So, you know, all of this adaptability is available. Um, as we progress through the design, um, you know, there, there will be opportunities of, of further interaction, uh, but, you know, the outside of the building is still to be developed, you know, but we're, we're, we're progressing through that quickly um, as we get through these, as I mentioned, schematic design and design development. Um, <clears throat> related to the first question about the Peace Park, um, again, th those are further comments. You know, these are these are inspirations and in design concepts, uh, utilizing existing materials, uh, not going back to the plan, but looking to to capture the existing stairwell, um, the main main entrance steps. Uh, like as Mayor Sullivan mentioned, the, the the pillars. You know, whether they turn into mm -hmm. other types of materials in that peace park or meditation area. Um, but we are. There's a lot of excellent materials that could be salvaged or are going to be salvaged and be utilized within the structures. Um, so that's kind of a quick synopsis of where we are. Thank you, and uh, Joe Sullivan. Thank you, Rob. Um, one of the promises that we made when we, we took the uh, responsibilities of being a project manager is that we would ensure that we engage the public with this building. This is a public facility. We want, we want the public's opinion. We, we're, we're engaging in these public forums to ensure that we, everybody has a voice and, and we want to hear that voice. We want to try to implement as much as we can with the, with the discussions that we have. And as the designs evolve, we're going to have more of these public forums and hopefully uh, publicize what we're doing and how we're moving forward with the actual design. So I, I encourage the public to comment and, and we'll, we'll provide a a link or a um, email that you can provide, you know, commentary to so that we can at least address it. Thank you. Thank you. And Mayor. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Rob. I, I do also want to just thank, I see Deputy Chief Brian at Delhi. Uh, listen, I'm not a firefighter. I'm not a police officer. Uh, Lieutenant LaFrance is on tonight. I'm director of BEMA. Steve Hook is with us tonight. Bill Santos from IT. Those are the experts. So we have leaned heavily on those four departments to let us figure out how do we craft this? Um, you know, much like uh, when a hospital is built, they go to doctors for us to defy, you know, what do you need? What do you need in a specific section of that building? And that's what we've been doing. But what Mr. Sullivan, who is not related to me, put that on the record. Uh, what Joe just said uh, is 100% accurate. We are going to want to continue to have more of these. Uh, the community component is vital. Uh, I want it to be a welcoming uh, open type of, of lobby when you walk in the community room that's going to be utilized uh, for a variety meeting. So again, uh, it's an excellent question, uh, Joanne. So thank you so much. I appreciate your time tonight. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, our next speaker is, uh, before I ask uh, our next speaker, uh, which is Patricia Kelleher to speak, uh, there is a person with the screen name of Hempseed who would like to speak. And you need to rename yourself, please so that we know uh, for the record uh, who we're speaking with. Thank you. So Ms. Kelleher, you are up. I'm muted. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you, Mayor Sullivan and um, Council President Farwell, um, who he and I went to the Whitman School together. Um, I'm <laughs> Um, and I just want to preface my comments by saying, by thanking Chief Gomes from the Brockton Police Department because over the past year and a half, they've established a really good victim um, service component of the Brockton Police Department that we have worked very closely from Family and Community Resources, our advocates for family violence. Um, and that um, it's because of those victims that go to the, um, from the city of Brockton, that I'm asking if um, in the design of this building, if there will be space for 
police officers or victim advocates to meet with a victim um, confidentially, sort of outside of the hustle and bustle of, that, we now, that we now have at the police department. Uh, first of all, Pat, thank you for what you do and your team at Family and Community Resources. Um, I will be remiss if I didn't thank uh, Police Chief Manny Gomes and, and Chief Mike Williams from the Fire Department. Specific to uh, what you just said, a a absolutely. Um, you know, this is a blank canvas. Um, so to hear uh, for what we can provide for our uh, organizations here uh, that are providing social services agencies, as you know, uh, we have seen a, a spike in domestic violence and mental health uh, issues because of COVID. So uh, everything needs to be discussed. Uh, both the police chief and fire chief have designated respective uh, employees. Like I said, Deputy Chief Nardelli and, and, and Lieutenant uh, LaFrance to assist us on those 32 calls. Um, so that is a valuable piece of information that you shared with us and we truly appreciate it. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, next up, we have Christopher Costa. Uh, if you could unlock Mr. Costa's microphone, thank you. Oh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. All right. Uh, hi, my name is Christopher Costa. Uh, many of you might know me. I was the youngest person appointed for the Historic Commission under Mayor Carpenter's first administration. Um, as Michael Nunes brought up earlier, we all know the high school itself is very historic. I've lived from Brockton to LA at times in my life. I've seen buildings leveled, hollowed out for new buildings. I just don't see how we can't incorporate certain aspects of the building because the historical society, it's not architectural salvage. They have no space for, for sections of this building. They have sections of Keith Ave sitting behind their buildings rotting. So giving them chunks of the building will go to waste. These, these chunks of, of architectural salvage need to be incorporated into the building it, or the building just needs to stay. I just don't think it's a proper use of space, to be honest. It, it's, we, it's, it's a waste. We've lost so much downtown as it is. It's the last grand building in that area. It's that or City Hall. Thank you, Mr. Costa. Um, MC, you have not renamed yourself. Uh, if you could give that a try, we would appreciate it. And uh, with that, uh, I'd like to invite um, Patrick Quinn to speak. Hello, good evening. Everyone can hear me okay? Yes, we can. Mayor and everyone else, this is a wonderful project. This is, um, I've been kind of quietly keeping tabs of this, but I think everything's great here, what you guys are doing. And clearly we should, we should lean towards the technical experts about the technical aspects of what the building needs. But I do think that the, one of the most important things, especially if we want to make Brockton and continue it to be a city of champions for the 21st century is form follows function. And I feel like in the past, a lot of buildings in Brockton, we forget the form follows function. We just do the form without the function. And so I think there might be a way, not so much using the old high school building, but incorporating it. If we were to look at it and maybe use the facade of it to be the facade of the new parking garage, something of that nature, of that, of that nature. Also, I think, um, I think Joan Zibian had a great, uh, Joanne Zibian had a great point about um, having this building um, be as green as possible. I would say if we're gonna spend $98 million, we should absolutely make sure this building is LEED certified, or at least close to that. Uh, it's a great design, I love it. I feel like we need to think about the fact that it's gonna be sited on the top of Legion Parkway and that roof space would be absolutely an amazing green space on the top. Can you imagine having that built so that someday we could have high school groups or junior high school groups, Boy, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, whatever, doing beehives up there, a green space. They did this in Brooklyn at, on the tops of factories where I work sometimes in the film business and it absolutely boosted the neighborhood and the economy. So I think we're on the right track for this. And that's, uh, that's pretty much, there's a lot I could say, but I just wanna say everyone here is, you guys are on the right track, but I think we have to absolutely still look at into somehow not using the old high school building, but incorporating it into a new design. The design now is great. It's kind of post nineties, Prairie S Frank Lloyd Wright. It's really great. 
I don't know how much of the form will follow the function as it as for the public use, but there's also a lot, a lot of little things that we need to talk about, like the Green Space Memorial Park. Also things like, you know, there should be a little spot for someone with a bicycle riding by to, to pump up their tire. You see that in a lot of, mm -hmm. lot of great little communities now, a, a water fountain, things of that nature. Maybe there has to be a public bathroom as well somehow inside the building for people to use so that this, the building isn't just utilized for the technicians, but also for the public. And so we can change that way we're policing as well, possibly. But uh, I'm gonna stop talking because I could ramble on forever. But Mr. Mr. Mayor, you're doing a great job. Everyone here, it's, it's great. Really, really, really glad that you guys are on top of this. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. Um, for those of you who are camera shy, we are still taking questions via the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. And of course, we're also, uh, we'll take questions via email. So uh, we'll continue to uh, work with you on that. Uh, the next person up is, is it Michelle Hansen? Henson? Uh, if you could open that microphone, please, Daniel. Michelle, Hello? you should be able to unmute yourself now. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, hi. Um, first and foremost, yes, I do agree that there is a need for this type of building. I will be over the moon happy for Director Hook to be in a space where he can actually train cert people. You know, I had a, a small amount of time to work and learn from him. And I can see there are old buildings in their need and I'm very happy um, for public safety. That being said, my questions are, if there are buildings being considered um, for a new location or if there are locations for the uh, Keith School relocation, what are they? Um, and if you can't name them now, when can you um, name them? Um, do you have a plan um, for the people that will be, um, be out of homes through eminent domain? There are people that are gonna lose their homes. Is there a plan, a set plan um, for those people? Um, and as far as the inviting look of the building, I'm sure it's a very nice building. It will serve its function, but make no mistake, there's nothing inviting about that very institutional building that'll sit on top of a hill and look down on a whole lot of black and brown people. And I'm looking at a board of none of that who have made this decision for this city. Now, as far as you know, to say that you're gonna have inviting green space, we have the beautiful DW field, thank you very much. And the families of Brockton thoroughly enjoy that space that beautiful green space that we have. And to not understand that you can put your little pathways and gardens and all that will be lovely and it'll be beautiful for your employees. So I applaud you for that, that they will have a nice place to sit at breaks and lunchtime, that is good for them. But make no mistake, that is not a public space. And until we make some changes in how policing um, the issues with, with the schools. The public's not going to want to interact and have fun and be in your space. Um, and I just think that we need to understand that. And I think that you need to show enough respect for the people in this city to acknowledge that. And that's all that I have. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Thompson. To me. Yes, Mr. Mayor, I'm sorry. I'm oh, thank you, thank you, Ms. Henson. I appreciate that. No, so um, she just brought up some really, really um, poignant points that we need to discuss. Um, first thing is, if you if you um, had looked at Mr. Um, Schmiegel's uh, rendition, um, there is no need for eminent domain for residential properties. Um, the, the boundary, um, if we decide to go to Highland, then we would, but as the schematic shows, um, it was just a city-owned uh, parcel uh, that is represented on, on this proposed building. In terms of the location of myself and uh, Superintendent Thomas and Ken Thompson from the schools and Dr. Jim Cobbs from the schools and Jim Pluff, uh, the building commissioner, we have looked at some sites, but in terms of pinpointing the site, um, we have to follow procurement law 
and Mike Morris, our procurement officer, is working to do an RFP. So we have to abide by the law. So it would be premature um, to state anything. Um, and I will tell you, though, the commitment that myself and the superintendent and all the individuals that are helping on this is that we are going to find a location here in the confines of the city of Brockton that is going to be much more better uh, educational wide and providing more opportunities for our boys and girls and our staff as well. So we are going through the due diligence process, um, but I do want to also just acknowledge what Bishop said, that I have eight volunteer city residents that make up my community justice task force led by Phyllis Ellis, the chair, vice chair is Pastor Mark Oliver, and they're looking at four subcommittees, education, police and reform, health, and, and, and economic development. So I look forward to their uh, findings. It's a little off topic, not about this tonight, but that will be coming in short order in the month of April. Thank you, Ms. Henson. Thank you, Mayor Sullivan. Um, I have a, Zaritra Radgood. Uh, uh, thank you. Sorry, I pronounced your, mispronounced your name. Ha, it's okay. People usually mess it up. <laughs> um, it's actually Deonta. Um, sorry if I'm a little Deonta. nervous. I usually, this is my first time I'm speaking at one of these things. So I'm not really sure if what I have to say is more of a question as much as it is a statement. Um, but last summer, as Bishop Tony Branch was talking about with the um, George Floyd protest that was going on in Brockton, um, it just doesn't really make sense that there is a $98 million building going up when it seemed that we had, it feels very performative, I think is what I'm trying to say, is that it feels very performative and that um, you said you spent 32 weeks um, figuring this out, but you still don't know where the Keith School students will be located um, and you can't answer any of our questions. And it does seem like you have everything else about the building figured out. Um, and as far as the department training opportunities, I'd like to know what training, like what reform has there been? Because with the protests that were going on last summer, um, you said this discussion about this public safety building has been going on for 32 weeks. And that was, that started last summer. So it just seems very, um, I guess, hypocritical and how you guys say that you see us and you hear us and you stand with us and things like that, but that you stood with us during this protest and said that you see us and that you were gonna make these reforms. But two months later, you started discussing how can we make a bigger building and put it on top of a school. So I would just like to say that. And I don't agree with this. And thank you for joining us. Um, Uh, our next speaker is uh, Jean Michel, or John Mich Jean Michel, Jean Michel. Yes, that's uh, me. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can. How's it going? Thank you, guys. Um, I appreciate this whole meeting. It's been great. Um, again, my name is Jean. I think I can I can agree with uh, what our last speaker said. I think we need a little bit more represent representation of our people in this board. But um, I think mainly the the best thing we can do for the city is just bring back the pride back in the city. I think we bring back the pride in the city with investing into the future. How do we invest into the future? It's investing to the kids. So I think if we're gonna spend $98 million, we should find a way to spend that on the high school. Um, I, don't, I don't see no reason why we shouldn't have, um, another thing, rest in peace, Marvin Hagler. I don't think there's no reason why we shouldn't have, we have 4,000 kids in the high school. That, that's gonna build the future of Brockton. That's gonna make policing better in Brockton. Um, I think getting a pride back to the city is gonna what's gonna lead the city forward for the future than a $98 million facility right now. If you wanna spend the 98 million, I think you should spend on the school and the kids and the future, which is always the kids right now. And then sooner than later, that other building, 98 million that you wanna bend to build on top of the high school will also come. I just think we gotta find a way to bring that pride back. And um, I just wanted to say that. Thank you, sir. Um, Superintendent uh, Thomas, would you like to, uh, sure. you mentioned, you made your comments very early on in the presentation, and I don't know if um, a, a lot of people heard them, but you did talk about uh, the school reinvestment. So if you could take that, please. Sure. Um, so um, uh, last fall, um, 
we submitted a statement of interest to the Mass School Building Authority. Um, the city of Brockton receives 80% of any project that we're accepted to with the Mass School Building Authority. It was um, approved by the, um, it has to be voted on and approved by the school committee and the city council for us to submit that statement of interest. And that is for a renovated or possibly new Brockton High School. Um, it goes through, a, once, we, once we get accepted, it goes through a feasibility process. Um, and then the architects will tell us what is the best thing to do, either build a new Brockton High or renovate the current Brockton High School. And so this has been in the work since last fall. Um, and again, we get 80% reimbursement. We have been very successful with the MSBA. And again, the school committee and city council have never denied any statement of interest. Uh, in my 10 years at central administration, again, I have applied for over $78 million in renovations to our schools, uh, which has been reimbursed 80%. And the school committee and the city council and the mayor have always um, unanimously approved those applications. So. I'm very hopeful that we'll be accepted into the MSBA um, and end up with a, you know, a, a renovated Brockton High School or a new Brockton High School. And that's not only the building, that's all the fields around it. Um, and so you would see new turf fields around Brockton High. You would see um, a new gymnasium, um, so which would fit, obviously, the needs of our students. So I appreciate everybody again. Uh, for all coming on and supporting the, the, the students of Brockton High School. But again, um, like the school committee and city council, um, they have never ever expected less for the students of Brockton. Gene, I believe you have a follow up. I do, I do. Thank you for that superintendent. I appreciate that. I did miss that part. Um, so also for the students though, I believe a com more community centers in the school and the city would be better for the kids. So outside of outside of what's going on is in the classrooms, I think our students go um, to when they leave the school. So how do we plan on building more community centers? Right now we have the YMCA Boys and Girls Club and that's pretty much about it for 4,000 kids. So once they leave school, there's not much for them to do. Yes, um, I see. Uh, Mayor? Yes, I, first of all, I want to thank Gene, and he mentioned uh, Mavis Marvin Hagler. That's one of the reasons why we're called City of Champions, and I will tell you that um, he will always be, uh, you know, a, a creator of civic pride, uh, and, and, you know, I will tell you that the city will recognize and honor Marvelous Marvin, so thank you to Gene. Uh, his passing was devastating to the family and to the community and to the boxing world. Um, in terms of what Mike Thomas and I have been doing since I took office, again, I took office January 6th of 2020, and about a month and a half later, we were dealing with COVID. And we'll never forget, as of today, the 415 residents that have died here in the city of Barton because of COVID and the over 12,000 cases of residents in the city. Community Center, the old Goddard School, Mike and I took a tour, um, and we are actually renovating that to make that a community uh, center. Uh, myself and the state delegation, which is... Uh, Leader uh, Claire Cronin, State Representative Jerry Cassie, State Representative Michelle Dubois, uh, as well as uh, Senator uh, Mike Brady. We've been talking about a youth center in Brockton, and I've been talking uh, a lot about that with uh, Councilor Lachitina Cardoza. Uh, we need to take care of our youth. Uh, they're hurting right now. The fact that they have been 100% remote is just not normal, not, not healthy, and we know that. And as a parent of three, I realize that. So um, Gene said, bring back Brockton pride. 100%. I was born and raised in this city. It's the best, best darn city in the Commonwealth and the nation. But we can do better, but we can only do better together. And that's what tonight's all about. It's coming together, listening and learning, getting criticisms. That's healthy as well. And ideas and suggestions. I think Pat Quinn had some suggestions tonight that we haven't even thought about. So um, again, um, I want to thank uh, Eugene for taking the time tonight. Uh, and we're going to continue this discussion without question. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mayor Sullivan. Uh, I'd like to uh, acknowledge Elizabeth Lasso, uh, if you could unlock her. Mike, thank you very much. Liz? Hello? There you are. Thank you. Hi, I'm so sorry. I actually, I, I only just raised my hand a minute ago and I thought that there would be many other people in skew before me because, um, or in queue before me. And I went to grab a salad out of my fridge. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Eating all day. Um, first of all, thank you everyone. Uh, 
Mayor Sullivan and um, Mr. May and all of the council members and everyone who's here tonight, Stephen Hook. Um, I really appreciate uh, you guys taking the time to hear us because I know that in the beginning there was a lot of hubbub about you know the public input on this new facility. So um, with that being said, um, you know I have a few concerns about also spending the money on this new facility when um, we know that um, Steve Hook is not only the um, director of emergency management for Brockton, but he's also representing Holbrook. And we know now that Abington is also joining the Holbrook emergency management system, uh, which is operated out of the Holbrook facility, which um, is a beautiful new facility that they uh, created there, which is a massive facility for such a small town. And uh, considering the fact that they allowed another town to join in their entity of an emergency management system, I would question why we couldn't perhaps look at making a, um, a joint effort and joining other communities around here and using the same resources, seeing that, you know, yes, there are emergencies and there are things that come up and that pop up, but if we could operate that out of a central location, and be able to disperse that throughout the cities and the towns that we surround, it could be a cost saving to everyone. So um, now with that being said, you're looking at building this new facility um, and you, you've not had any plans to um, actually replace the school that you want to replace. So it's kind of like putting the cart before the horse. Shouldn't there be a plan to redo the school first and then this safe safety facility after so that you are taking care of the children and their education? I've heard so many people saying, oh, the kids come first. They are the future of Brockton and of our society. But yet that's not what happened. It's more of the building this facility than actually looking at what the city needs. Now, the thing is, there's also more of a need to spend money on doing improvements in Brockton to make it a more viable looking environment to invite new business and more residential development and, and betterment of the city. So my question is, is why not take that into consideration to maybe look at joining another town to be able to join and have a bigger safety system in conglomeration with other facilities and cities and um, think about spending the money on improving the overall look of the city and in, in improving the infrastructure and the schools so there's a lot to be said about that and those things i never heard being brought into question so um that's basically the input from me and from um, people that I have spoken with in my neighborhood who have asked me to represent them, knowing that there are many, many people who are joining this <clears throat> excuse me, meeting and not wanting to have multiple people with the same kind of things I'm addressing here. So my, my, I guess my main question that I'd like to have answered are, um, have you looked at joining emergency systems through other towns like Mr. Hook represents. And um, the fact that there's been no plan of building an alternative school <clears throat> for the facility to want to take over. Thank you, Ms. Lasso. Um, Mayor, would you like to? Uh, yeah, I mean, I want to, thank, I want to thank Ms. Lazo and uh, on behalf of her her, her uh, neighborhood as well for coming on. Um, I, I I can't speak to um, the uh, you know the regional capacity. Um, Steve Hook is an expert, and I will tell you that without the efforts of Steve Hook uh, and what he's done uh, battling COVID nineteen, the city of Brockton would be a lot worse off than we are. I also just want to share with everybody that I took a tour yesterday, a walking tour, and Rob May was with us, um, with uh, Secretary of the Commonwealth, Mike Keneally, for uh, economic housing and economic development, and also Dan Rivera, the former mayor of Lawrence, who now is the CEO of, of Mass Development. Um, we took them to all these sites of, of development in the core of the city of Brockton. 
uh, they loved the, uh, the fabric known as Brockton, the quilt, and how we can put all these pieces together to have a beautiful modern downtown area. Um, but I also think that, um, you know, we are multitasking right now, meaning uh, myself and the school committee, and as mayor, I chair the school committee and the city council and the state reps uh, and Superintendent Thomas. Um, we are charged to make sure that our youth um, get the best education. That's why the Student Opportunity Act is, is so important for the future of Brockton. But I also know that we're talking about a fire station on Pleasant Street that was actually wired by Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison was in that building. We just acquired three new apparatus. Deputy Chief Nardelli can tell you this. Three new fire engines. One of them cannot even fit in Pleasant Street. It's not weight bearing. It was built for horse apparatus. Uh, so again, we need to be able to pivot. Uh, we have to keep our eyes on the prize for um, Brockton as a whole. And a major part of the city of Brockton's future is our Brockton Public Schools. And I'm a proud graduate of Brockton High, 1988 Red. So um, I, I really thank Elizabeth. I don't know if Mr. Hook uh, wants to talk about it. I, 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 that's not my skill set, but, um, but Steve's an expert. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Good, good evening, everybody. So um, just to talk about the regional component, I don't think it would be a good fit for, for the city of Brockton. Uh, the city is very large, 100,000 people um, plus and very complex. And to be, uh, we do have a, a beautiful facility uh, right next door in Holbrook, but um, I think it, it's not even large enough to encompass Brockton's operation. So I appreciate the comments, but uh, I don't think at the end of the day, it would be a good fit for the city of Brockton. And Council President Farwell uh, would like to also address the question. I was just gonna respond as having spent so many years in public safety. It's the, the statistics that kind of drive this question. The call volume is so great for both the Brockton Fire Department and Brockton Police Department. I fear that you would overload any regional center if we were to try to carve out the dispatch function from this new facility. And I don't think that would significantly reduce the building cost. The fact is we have men and women at the police department who are working there's mold in the building at times because of dampness. Uh, unfortunately, there are pest control issues and pest droppings. There is air quality control issues, which came up when I served as mayor back in the 1990s. The state came in and forced us to install machinery that would give us more cubic feet per minute air exchange because it wasn't fair to the people who were there to either report crimes, be interviewed, or were being held for some reason uh, pending a court appearance. And as the mayor just mentioned, uh, the central fire station is just so old. And most people don't know the firemen live there. The, the men and women of the fire department work 24 hour shifts. So they literally live, eat and sleep in that station when they're not out on a call. It, it's their home away from home, if you will, as trite as that sounds. So those are some of the factors that go into to, to designing a modern police fire complex. The thing that bothers me most about uh, the comment is, I fear someone has started a rumor that we are somehow going to boot out the program at the key center and we're going to muscle our way in there and do whatever we have to do for this complex. And that is simply not true. I do not know of a single elected official appointed official or anyone on this committee with whom I've served that has said anything less than we will take care of those kids. We will first find them a place to be located. It will be an improved facility and it will meet the needs and exceed the needs of their educational program. So if that rumor is out there to the extent that people are listening to this program, please know that is false. We will not do that. I would be the first one to stand up with the mayor and, and really raise hell about that because kids are everything. Kids are our future as people have spoken to uh, th that subject before. So it just is not going to happen. And uh, I, I want the public to be reassured of that. And I thank you. Thank you, Council President. Uh, Deputy Chief Nardelli. Good evening. Thank you, Rob. Thank you for the question. Um, I would just like to echo uh, 
Director Hook and uh, Council President uh, Fowell's comments, um, I can just speak um, on the technical side of the fire and EMS uh, portion of this that there are, we, we, res we respond in up to in the area of 30,000 responses a year. And that's just on the fire and EMS side, not including um, police responses. So th that is, a, that is a, a quite a daunting number um, sometimes in our, in our own capacity. So I, I just want to echo uh, Mr. Hook and uh, I appreciate, um, I appreciate his comments as well as uh, President, uh, Council President Fowles' comments. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, we are going to next go to uh, Sean Sheridan. Sean, if you would unmute your microphone. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can, sir. Uh, Mr. Mayor, why is the public safety complex the priority? Why is this extremely important if, in fact, the crime rate is generally getting better? Wouldn't the hundred million dollars be better spent by investing in the city uh, instead of uh, by way of investing in a new school? The mayor spoke to the project being overdue, and I can't think of a more overdue project than investing in the education system. Why are you suggesting more police is the solution Brockton needs? What evidence supports that theory? How does building a new security complex help rebuild Brockton? And would you not agree that a hundred million dollars in the school is a better investment? Mr. Farwell, of the hundreds of hours spent, how many uh, studying this, how many were spent on data rich analysis of the public benefit of a safety complex versus a new school, also built somewhere in the 1900s, earlier rather than later? Mr. CFO uh, Clarkston, in your plan, you propose a whopping $7 million left over for high school renovation plus everything else over the 20 years. Did you look at the cost? versus benefit analysis of investing 91 million into the schools and 7 million into the public safety complex and everything else? And if so, what did your analysis find? And if not, why not? Mr. Superintendent, with all due respect, you were looking for a site for a school. Why not the site slated for the new public safety complex? Mr. Sullivan and Sean KBA, is it not true that you stand to make between seven and 13% on the project or seven to $13 million. Uh, and, and Mr. Hook, um, did you analyze your guessing before you spend a hundred million dollars, shouldn't you analyze if the other safety complex could be utilized so that all of this tremendous debt burden doesn't be uh, doesn't become shouldered upon the people. So lastly, Mr. Farwell just said regarding the schools that we will first find them a new facility. But the CFO just showed us that after the cost of the safety complex, there's only seven million dollars left over. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sheridan, for your comments. Um, I see uh, Council President Farwell would like to address and. As would uh, uh, Trey Clarkson, but let's start with uh, Council President Farwell. Uh, thank you, and thank you, Sean. You and I have spoken before, and as I have always told you, even though you're not a Brockton resident, I do enjoy listening to your analysis and comments. Let me make a couple of comments in general as I see things, and no one, no one can say I'm right. Uh, I may be off base. But this facility will enhance economic development in Brockton. It is going to be at the top of Legion Parkway. It is going to include traffic improvements, signalization lights, pedestrian controls. It's going to involve a change in the direction of traffic so that there is a better movement of traffic downtown. It's going to enhance the ability of the fire department to respond, God forbid, to any incidents that happen in the downtown area. It's going to generate jobs to vendors who will be working on this project for a couple of years. There are a lot of things that this project will add to the city that obviously we don't have time tonight to talk about. Um, this is not an either or, and I guess that is another rumor that's going around that if we do this, we will not have the capacity to take care of the schools. And Sean, I can only tell you as someone who calls them as I see them, we wouldn't do this if we weren't going to also take care of the needs of children. We would not do this if this compromised our ability to take on debt service 
and handle expansion and renovation and improvements at Brockton High School. Uh, the superintendent's committed to that, the mayor is committed to that, the council and the school committee are. So I, I understand your comments, uh, challenging uh, Director Hook about the statistics. The fact of the matter is we are so busy as a city that you just can't take that call volume and thrust it over to a conglomeration of other towns and expect those dispatchers and that facility to handle that. Uh, it, it's, just, it's not only common sense, it isn't done anywhere else. You don't see Boston co-locating with Brookline. Uh, so I do appreciate your comments. I always respect what you have to say, but this has been a very carefully analyzed project with the major stakeholders who are going to have to implement all of the changes involved in deciding what the facility should look like and what it should be able to do. Uh, and I'm sure other speakers can pick up from there and, and give Sean some more information. Uh, Mayor Sullivan. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I want to thank Mr. Sheridan for taking the time tonight. Um, I do want to clarify some statements he made. I, I never said that this project includes hiring more police officers. I didn't say that at all. Um, when I took office on January 6, 2020, I took the oath and it was a privilege and an honor and it still is today. Um, but during my inaugural speech, I said that um, we need to provide the tools in the toolbox for our brave men and women that put their lives on the line in our community. Um, to be able to, to do that, this started under Mayor Jack Unit's administration, uh, and then Harrington and Balzotti and the late Mayor Carpenter and, and Moses and now myself. Um, this is not an either or, as the president has said, and former Mayor Farwell. Um, this is about modernizing the city of Brockton. Um, we will always, always do what's right for the taxpayers, the constituents, the people that elect us, the people that live in the city of Brockton and work in the city of Brockton. This is something that is long overdue. It's something that it makes sense from a financial component because the bonding rate for municipalities right now are in the high ones to 2.5. So quite honestly, we are going to be able to do many projects. As long as I'm mayor, I'm going to be an advocate to make sure that we do the best projects for cost containment measures. Um, but to try to go after the consultants that they're going to make money. I mean, that's, that's their profession. That's their line of work. That's every consultant, every developer. That's why you hire the best and you do it in a process that benefits the municipality. So I, uh, as I said earlier, um, ideas and criticisms and suggestions are great. That's why we have community meetings. Uh, and I do you know, appreciate your time, Mr. Sheridan, but we can respectfully disagree on, on what the purpose and plan is. It's really to help Brockton move forward, much like the renovation of Brockton High School, uh, much like the renovation of the Shaw Center, much like a youth community or intergenerational. All of this uh, is going to help the city of Brockton move forward uh, into the next decade. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Appreciate that. Uh, we have another question from Janita. Uh, if we could unlock her microphone, I would appreciate it. Thank you. Hi, uh, Deonta. Oh, um, I'm so close. <laughs> I know, it's okay. Everybody's just almost there. <laughs> um, so I did just want to add on um, to what was said a little bit ago. Um, I don't remember um, who said it, but um, he said that you guys want to stop the rumors that you are not taking the public into account, like the public's opinion into account. But um, I've read, you know, I've been reading up on the, you know, the articles on the enterprise, like about this new public safety facility. And even in this article, it says that um, Mr. Robert Sullivan said, Sullivan said the city hasn't shut anyone out of the process and the public will get a chance to weigh in but was first prioritizing the needs of the departments that will be in the facility. And I would just like to say that it's, these are not rumors. These are genuine feelings that we have because it seems like you guys have only ever said that you're standing with us and there's no action to it. And so to call them rumors feels like it's not acknowledging, you're not acknowledging exactly what the public is saying. And today I actually just heard about this meeting like a few hours ago, honestly. So I think you could do a better job of if you want the public to put their input in and if you do care about the public's opinion, it's not enough to just, you know, put it up on a website that a lot of people don't even know about. Um, and then also you mentioned there would be more space for department training opportunities, but what what type of training will there be like cultural competency training? Like what, what else will the police learn is they're gonna get a new building, but what new things are they gonna do within their department? 
That's all. Uh, thank, thank you, uh, Mayor Sullivan. If you could address you. that, I, I do one one quick caveat. Yes. It is uh, seven twenty-five. As, as we all know, this meeting is ending at seven thirty. So um, we have a couple of other questions. So thank you. I'll be brief. Um, I want to thank uh, thank you again for your comments. Um, number one, I, I never said any. It, I didn't say the term uh, rumors at all. That that wasn't me. But what I said in the enterprise, I stand by. Um, we have reached out to the department heads. This is not just a police station. I know some people are saying that this is four departments in one location: a police, fire, IT, and BEMA. Um, in terms of um, you know getting the general public involved, this is a meeting tonight that I pledged, and we'll have more. Uh, Councillor uh, Rodriguez, former mayor, Moses Rodriguez, who's a friend of mine, um, said that in the chamber and I agreed with him. We're going to do this. But to go to the departments first makes sense. I don't know uh, how much apparatus can fit for the fire department, but Brian Adeli does. I don't know what BEMA needs in terms of storage, but Steve Cook does and Bill Santos knows IT. So um, nothing's disingenuous. Um, everything is transparent on my administration. Um, that's how I was brought up in the city of Brockton and that's how I'm, I'm governing. Uh, and working with, with our partners, both public and private. Um, we will have more of these. We started posting this on Facebook and on the social page. Um, we hired, as I said, um, translators. The city of Brockton hired translators tonight to make it much more conducive to our residents. We're a beautiful, diverse community. So Haitian Creole, Cape Verdean Creole, Spanish and English tonight. Um, and again, um, we will continue this conversation um, but I really just want to say that um, we need to collaborate and work together. But please don't say it's just a police station because, because it's so much more than that. It's just one quarter of what's going to comprise this, this building. Thank you. Uh, Barbette is going to have the last question this evening. Um, and I would ask that, uh, Barbette, you give us your first and last name. And then the other people who still have outstanding questions, please type them into the Q&A or send them uh, via email. We would appreciate that. Thank you, Babette. If I'm pronouncing that correctly. Oh, can you hear me? Yes. Can you Hi, your uh, personal name, please? Oh, so sorry. Uh, my name is Barbette Jocelyn, uh, pronounced Baba Jocelyn in Haitian Creole. Um, I just wanted to start by saying uh, rest in peace to Marvin Hagler. And um, I also wanted to thank everybody here for giving us the time and the space to, you know, voice our concerns. Um, also, I, I just want to say thank you to all of the essential workers that are here and that are being represented today. Um, your work is not unnoticed and it's very much appreciated. <laughs> um, that being said, uh, I, I, I just want to... I'm going to try to be brief just because I know we're short on time and pretty much a lot of people have said it already. Uh, but again, the, the, the main concern is, is the communication in my perspective. Um, there's, there's a clear disconnect on what we see as the priority versus what you guys are saying is the priority, right? Where it's like, you're saying that one thing is the priority and doing something else that doesn't seem like it matches. And I feel like there's a large disconnect in that. And I understand that, you know, from your perspective, you guys post it, you know, on Facebook and stuff like that. But in reality, it's the, the question is, is not what have you been doing? What have you been doing better to try and reach out to the people? And, and that's, that's like always a concern of mine where it's like, and this is like, again, no offense to anybody. Cause I know like you, again, you specifically mayor, you came in and like, you know, a month later you were in a pandemic. There's no way that anybody, not even your predecessors could have, you know, handled it any better. And I thank you for, you know, everything that you've done. But at the same time, um, there, was a, there was a Pandora's box that opened after that. And again, in 2020, what happened to George Floyd was a huge part of that. And I feel like a lot of that created a conversation, especially in a city like Brockton uh, that has so many beautiful people of color here. And I feel like a lot of that has been ignored to have like, you know, again, two months later, now the conversation of, of this building where it's like, now there was like, it felt like a lot of conversations were missed. And I understand that you have a task force, but again, the, the task force, how representative of the people is it? Um, but 
uh, to wrap everything up, again, the main questions are, again, number one, the city's priorities, um, the financing of this project, the, again, the 2020 national awareness of police misconduct nationwide, uh, not just here. And again, obviously the COVID pandemic rampaging every city, including Brockton, which exposed a lot of economic uh, disparities within Brockton mm -hmm. in and of itself. And then, you know, one of the questions that I'm not sure was actually brought up, but may have been, um, is the procurement process. You know, understanding like, does the city have a procurement policy in place that defines who will be eligible to be a contractor? Um, and everything along those lines, but I'm, I'm just gonna stop there. And again, I just wanna say thank you, um, please, peace and blessings to everybody here. I hope you guys have a wonderful evening. Thank you very much, sir. Um, I see Councillor Farwell uh, with his hand up and I'm sure the mayor would also like to, to say something also. Um, and again, to the, pan, uh, to the attendees, uh, the meeting is wrapping up and that was the last question, but you may use the Q&A or uh, email to the mayor's office. Thank you. Councillor Farwell. Uh, thank you. Uh, Rob, uh, to that gentleman, you are right. We always can do better in government trying to do outreach and get information to people. Other than social media, other than the local newspaper, which I found out the other day has made some corporate changes and they don't cover municipal government the way they used to. Please, and this goes to anyone watching this broadcast, email in suggestions to the mayor's office as to how we can better communicate. All of us in elective office want that. We want to be able to reach out. We want to hear from people. And it's frustrating in our part too, because when we're criticized, we know we can do a better job. And maybe we're just not thinking of something that someone else knows and, and we don't. So please uh, take the time when tomorrow, the next day, email the mayor with some concrete suggestions. And then I would ask the mayor to share it with the council and the school committee. And I thank you again. Thank you. If, if I could just quickly, I, I want to thank the um, uh, professionals that are all here and uh, everybody in the public for attending. And I would like to let the mayor have the last word. Thank no, you, I sir. just want to, I want to thank you, Rob, for, for hosting tonight. I just want to thank uh, the professionals, but but the citizens. I mean, Barbette, uh, he he's he, I've met yeah. him since I'm the mayor. He's he's a great Brocktonian, and um, he brings up some some really um, invaluable points. Um, you know, what council president just said, um, please, it's Mayor Sullivan at COBMA, City of Brockton, Mass, um, COBMA. Um, and if you can get that to me, um, you know, we will continue to, to, to vet it out. Um, you could always call our office. We have dedicated staff, 508-580-7123. Uh, um, the Community Justice Task Force is just one one endeavor that we're, we're doing, you know, we, we've done microaggression training. Uh, we've done unconscious bias training on the city side and school side. Mike Thomas and I last night were at Pastor Manny's church restoration for three hours uh, talking about racism uh, in the Brockton public schools. Valuable conversation, a uh, frank, honest conversation. So tonight is, is again, um, what, what my mantra is. It's open, it's, it's communicating, it's transparent. Um, you know, I am telling you again tonight, I'm pledging that, um, this project uh, will not, and I underline not, um, hurt our endeavors for Brockton Public Schools, um, for Brockton High. That's a three-year plan. Um, we have dedicated seven elected school committee members, 11 elected uh, city councilors, and myself working together on a local level. So um, I just want to thank everybody. Uh, I am pledging again that this is not a one and done. Um, this is just a step of many steps for building block for success known as the city of Brockton. So thank you all. Uh, be safe. Continue to wear your masks. Be diligent and vigilant because COVID is not gone. And if you are eligible, uh, please strongly consider uh, when you're in that phase to, to roll up your sleeve and take a shot. I'll be doing that on April 19th when I hit the phase. Thank you. God bless. Be safe, everybody.